All right, guys, what is good? Um, New York Giants right here, Eli Manning, the last New York Giants quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl championship. Um, got my own um, family members. My dad is an Eagles fan, but he is the only Eagles fan in our family. So with that... And that's why I put this Eagles helmet right on top. He put this helmet right on top of um, of of there. So, anyway, guys, um, very tough night Saturday. He gets all the bragging rights again, as this Giants is like little brother to uh, to our old friends, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. They are little brother. So. I'll talk about the Giants game. First, I want to, you know, welcome everybody in here to Slaughterhouse Sports. And, um, you know, it's 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 been a busy kind of life schedule lately. Um, but I want to thank the people that have, you know, watched the videos and that have complimented me on on, on making videos because they they can keep this process going of, um, of making videos. And I'm going to do it sporadically. Um, but I'm going to try uh, to, to add some content because I really do enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking into this microphone and enjoy analyzing uh, NFL and college football. So let's get to Saturday. Um, the, the Giants just got punked. I mean, the, their defensive line just got moved off of the ball. The, the linebackers like Jalen Smith, Landon Collins, these guys just couldn't really run fit at a high level. Uh, McFadden's still a really young player out of Indiana. So the Giants, in terms of their linebackers, they don't have strong backers, and the Eagles exploited it brilliantly. I mean, it's Shane Steichen, Nick Sirianni, They've done a great job, you know, building this team. And Sirianni and Hurts are really intimidating. I mean, this Eagles team is is a machine uh, offensively. So it's going to take a great effort from the 49ers to get to beat them and to get it done. You know, I think that the 49ers, you know, have a very good defense and have a very good team. Uh, so the 49ers have a great shot at, at beating the Eagles because this is a really strong Eagles team. So it'd be nice to see Philly get chopped down uh, right here in this NFC Championship in Philadelphia. It also didn't help for people who don't like the Philadelphia Eagles that the Eagles were able to, um, you know, play the the AFC South, play, play the Texans, play the Colts, play a bad Tennessee team. The NFC North was horrible this year. The Bears were the worst team in the NFL. Then you had the Minnesota Vikings that were a fraudulent team um, that had a, uh, you know, had a very good record, but their point differential wasn't, they were historically an anomaly. Even the Giants proved that. Then the, uh, the Lions, and then the Lions like played better this year, but were also inconsistent. And then the Packers is the worst Green Bay team in the past 15 years. So the scheduling gods really helped out the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, a thousand percent, the scheduling gods helped out the Eagles. And also having the Giants beat Minnesota so the Dallas Cowboys would not have to play you and then play the San Francisco 49ers it is kind of like Case Keenum beating Drew Brees, but guess what? You can't control that. That's a loser's mentality, blaming the schedule and whatever, but it is pointing out that the Eagles have had a nice road and they haven't been tested. They're a great team, and I want to see them tested. I want to see them beaten, and I wish that the Eagles were strained uh, in some way or another, but they haven't been. And the 49ers were strained by the Cowboys. That was a really physical, physical football game uh, that, that was played. But I'll get into my Cowboys thoughts in another video that, uh, that I'll do. All right, so what are the problems with the Giants? The problems with the Giants are interior offensive line is inconsistent. The problem with the Giants as well is is, you know, wide receiver, it's passing game. I mean, Daniel Jones was accurate. Daniel Jones improved, but is this the ceiling of Daniel Jones? And I would say yes. I would say that Daniel Jones is a guy that as he gets older and unfortunately as he gets slower, and you see this with Dak Prescott, who's almost 30 years old, these quarterbacks now, 
You know, a lot of them are very athletic, really run the football, but when their legs start to diminish, they have trouble kind of adjusting to being like more pocket passing guys. And Dak's trying to do that, but Daniel Jones is, you know, he's very good at running the football. He's a decent thrower of the ball. Um, so I just, I, I, I don't think Jones has ever been a really good deep ball thrower. He's, he's more of an intermediate style thrower, quick game kind of guy. And, um, I think that teams can spy on that. So it's tough because the giants next year, they, they can maybe pay Jones and hold off Jones, but if they brought in a rookie, are they good enough uh, in this cap situation to really go for it. So I would not straddle myself with Daniel Jones, and maybe there's a team that'll end up paying Daniel Jones like a four-year contract. I, I honestly, with Daniel Jones, I mean, I would honestly only pay Daniel Jones like if I was a GM. I just don't view him all that highly. I don't view him all that highly as a starting caliber quarterback. Um I would honestly look to maybe trade him because I think that you could get production at other spots that are very similar. I'd maybe bring in guys like Drew Locke that are good backup quarterbacks. Um, Trey Lance is out there. Maybe you could make a move for Trey Lance. I mean, if you're really trying to win, I mean, this is the this is might be the theme of the video. Nice guys don't always win. And and, and in the NFL, they seldom win. You know, you got to be like Nick Sirianni. You got to be a braggadocious kind of, you know, attitude guy to win. And the thing is, the Eagles got rid of Carson Wentz. They kind of treated him like crap at the end of their ten at the end of Wentz's tenure. And now look at them; they're in a much better spot with a better overall quarterback who looks like an awesome quarterback. Now the question for Jalen Hurts is, is Jalen Hurts going to continue to progress in the passing game? I view Hurts a little bit like Prescott. I think he's going to have a good four-year run. Um, I think the Eagles can link him to a deal for about four more years, but is he going to play into his 30s? I have questions about that because a lot of his game is utilizing him in the run game, and those accumulation of hits are going to take, you know, are going to take a toll. All right, so... You look at guys that are, you know, probably built to play into their 30s. It's probably Lawrence. It's Joe Burrow. Maybe Josh Allen, but Josh Allen takes a lot of hits as well. Um, we're going to have to see. I mean, Lamar Jackson's a very accurate passer. Probably Hurts and, and Jackson. Jackson has a stronger arm than Hurts. Um I would say that Jackson knows a better pocket passer than Jalen, but Jalen's developing in that in that realm. So um, Hertz is playing really good football. I think he's much better than Daniel Jones. I think he's one of the most valuable players in the NFL. I think that he could go on a tear here these next three years. Um, he is still an accurate passer. He doesn't, you know, he's a big guy that can take some hits. His arm strength is an elite, but he gets the job done, and this offensive line has been terrific. For people hating on Philly, it's going to help when Gannon, if Gannon goes to Houston, that will help. Kelsey's getting up there in age, so the offensive line somehow needs to deteriorate. Lane Johnson's getting a little bit older, so you have to hope that this offensive line deteriorates. You also have to hope that Jalen Hurts takes up a lot of cap. Um, so if Jalen Hurts now... I mean, if Deshaun Watson's making $45 million a year, the MVP Jalen Hurts just on the market is going to ask for $50 million. That's really going to help the Eagles become worse is by pay, paying Jalen Hurts. You're paying, uh, you know, A.J. and Jalen Hurts now. Um, that is, that is going to, that's going to hurt the rest of the football team. You're seeing that with Buffalo right now. They had a soft front seven, the Buffalo Bills. So the Giants, what they need to do, honestly, uh, if I were a Giants fan, is I would try to get Anthony Richardson. I think that Richardson as a quarterback is a guy that I think is going to be a very, very, you know, superstar level guy. I could see, I could see Richardson developing into a Jalen Hurts style guy. He's six five. He can really run. He can, he can absorb hits with his body and his frame. 
And I think that when you have Barkley in the backfield with Anthony Richardson, it makes it easy for the offensive line because Richardson is really tough to tackle in the open field. I think that Richardson is a big-time, big-time player. I think that these quarterbacks are really, really good. Believe it or not, like Bryce Young at his size, 5'9", and his stature, can he play late into his 30s? Um, Bryce Young, clutches quarterback, has very good arm strength, very good talent. Is Bryce Young going to play late? But, but, but staying on the Giants, for Daniel Jones, if the Giants are going to pay Jones like $40 million a year, that's just going to bury him. Uh, right now, the Giants need receivers. They need some cornerbacks. They need linebackers. Their defense has Fibido. It has Dexter. Um, it has Leonard Williams. So the D-line is good, but ironically, the D-line got manhandled by Philadelphia. The Giants are going to need linebackers very badly, and they are going to need some wide receivers. They are probably about two years away from having a complete team. And then I don't believe Daniel Jones, as he ages, I don't believe he's going to be the very good. I could see him being like Dak Prescott. I don't see Jones being that superstar. I see him being like a Ryan Tannehill level quarterback. I just do. I don't see him being very good. I haven't been a fan of Jones, you know, honestly, the last several years. He played great in Minnesota. He he played very admirable football this year against the Colts. And he's taken the Giants and 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 has elevated them. So he did, you know, objectively have a very good year. And he played great in that Minnesota game. And he's an accurate passer and he's a big enough guy that he can function as a starting quarterback. But are you going to win a championship with Daniel Jones? Is he going to put you over the top? So, and, and the, my, my answer to that is I don't think so. I think getting a rookie quarterback and hitting on a rookie, that's the way to build a team. You look at Jacksonville, their future is very bright these next few years when they're not paying Lawrence big bucks. The Eagles were able to stack their team when they were able to get off of Wentz and pay a second round quarterback in Jalen Hurts and hit on him. So, you look at Chicago and all the flexibility that they now have with a quarterback in Justin Fields, they have all these resources now. So not paying a quarterback is going to add you know, to your overall roster. It's going to add to your team not paying a quarterback a crazy amount of money. So the Giants, they just have a lot of work to do. Um, I want to see them become a run first team. I mean, Saquon is up for a, uh, for a contract. I think Saquon has another three years of playing great football. I do. Um, so you try to sign him maybe three years, 60 million, uh, by the end of that third year, it's going to be really tough. Saquon has about three or three years left of playing really good football. Daniel Jones, I think, I think he might have hit his ceiling, honestly, Daniel Jones. So that that's honestly how I view it. And I know it's going to sound harsh and whatever, but this is just reality. And the Dallas Cowboys are seeing reality and the Giants are seeing reality. So that's the toughest part is that loyalty gets in the way of building a dynasty. You look at Bill Belichick and the way he cut Darrell Revis and the way he cut certain guys, and it, and it really sucks to do it that way. And I'm sure Bill Belichick um, is saddened to do it that way. But you see sometimes loyalty really hurts um, your overall product. Uh, and, 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 and that's something that's counterintuitive because I want to be, I strive in my own personal life to be as loyal as possible. So sometimes it is... Sometimes it is more comfortable being loyal and trying to lose in a loyal way than going out there and completely abandoning who you are and who you are as a person. So you look at the quarterbacks uh, in this in this NFL, and um, the Dallas Cowboys have been too loyal. Jerry Jones has been too loyal to Ezekiel Elliott. You know his son. Uh, being uh, the general manager and Dak Prescott giving Dak and Zeke all this money. Dak and Zeke are great people. They're people that you want, you know, your daughter to date. If you'd had a daughter, you'd want Dak Prescott to date your daughter, all right? But the problem is, like, is that Dak is, is, a, is a terrifically nice person. He's a great leader. He's the ultimate face of the franchise. But 
is Dak Prescott going to win you playoff games? Is he going to win? So it's that it's that age old question between being nice and having your guys and then trying to win. Um, so it's tough um, because um, sometimes talents can be problems and can be headaches too. So it's it, it's not always perfect. Sometimes when you're not loyal at all and you get guys that are just talented, they don't gel and they create all this locker room problem. So I think that defensively, like positions that you can pay and keep, like safeties, linebackers, defensive line, you can have a really strong unit and a strong, you know, uh, nucleus. I think that paying the quarterback ruins just so much of your football team because I want to have a complete team. And you look at Cincinnati, their team is more complete than Buffalo. So it's about how do you build a complete team? So for the New York Giants, I really think – that um, Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, that they should be very judicious about their contracts. Um, It's going to get ugly. It might get a little bit nasty, but unfortunately it's going to be the right thing to do in the name of winning games, which is, again, you play in the playoffs, you play in this league to win Super Bowls and to build sustained success, and those decisions are really tough. And you're often going to betray, you know, people that you've built a, an amazing relationship with, and uh, and it's tough. It, it, it's uh, it's really tough, but um, you know, you got to strike that 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 uh, that balance there um, between winning and uh, being just a great person, and that's why it's really tough to be a GM. That's why it's tough to be a coach. Um, is, is, is when you're, you know, at these head coaching positions, you have to make these really difficult choices. So that's kind of how I view it for the New York Giants here going forward. They have to build their linebacking core. Uh, hopefully the Niners can beat the Eagles and can keep them, you know, can keep the Eagles at one championship. So you still have a four to one lead in that capacity because that's kind of all that matters. Um, If the Eagles get to a Super Bowl, I think that they're going to win. If they beat San Francisco, I think that they're going to end up winning the whole dang thing. So it's not looking good, but Brock Purdy and the Niners have a chance. So I'm excited about Brock and this Niners team coming to Philly. I think that they can maybe get the job done. All righty, guys. Thank you guys for watching uh, the video and going to go ahead and produce even another video on the rest of the NFL.